All right, what is up, everyone? Happy Tuesday, I believe it is a Tuesday. It is a Fido, yours a truly. And today I wanted to talk about how your phone is sabotaging your coding success. Hi, my name is Fido, and if you are new to this channel, welcome to Get Money Coding. Here I teach guys how to become coders without having any professional degrees, no technical experience or boot camps. That is how I became a professional coder without any of those three things. And if you are curious about how I went about completing this process of becoming a professional coder, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Before becoming a professional coder, I actually had no experience, no technical experience. Uh, I worked in restaurants uh, for pretty much my entire professional life up until the point that I got hired to become a coder. So as I said, if you are interested in figuring out how exactly I did that, I share the secrets, processes, uh, tactics that I use to make that happen here on the channel. So welcome on board. Okay. So today we're going to get into it guys. Today we're going to talk about how your phone is a sabotaging your success. And it, this is in particular something that I think gets overlooked at a lot. And uh, the reason is because having a smartphone by your hand has become essentially ubiquitous, ubiquitous um, for our existence as humans, right? And I'm reading off of my show notes here. And seriously, like you don't really think about it anymore, right? You wake up, your phone's there, you're, 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 you're on a walk, you have your phone, you're in the store, you have your phone, you're hanging out with your friends, you have your phone, you're hanging out with your girlfriend, you have your phone. You're going to the park to go play football. Your phone's by you. You know, like the, the your phone is everywhere, right? It, it, your phone is everywhere where you are effectively to the point where I think most people would say that it feels like it's an extension uh, of them, right? Um, one, of the, one of the funny things that I like to do or I used to like to do is I, w I would ask somebody if I could use their phone for a sec and just watch how anxious they get if you hold on to their phone for too long of time. Uh, I recommend trying it. It's funny. It's funny, but nobody can, to most people can't handle it. I mean, I would feel pretty disturbed if somebody had my phone for an extended period of time, you know? <laughs> it's, it, it happens, you know, I'm not here to judge on that point, right? Uh, it, it, it is what it is. And I'm not, and I'm not here for the entirety of the show. I don't want it to seem uh, that, I don't want to make it seem like I'm above uh, using a smartphone. I don't, I mean, I, 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 there's a lot of utility in smartphone in particular for the marketing of my business, right? So there's, absolutely no way that I'm going to look at it with such a harsh lens that I'm going to throw the baby out with the bathwater in terms of identifying the utility of a phone. However, we're going to break down the other side of it, which is the fact that it works against a lot of guys, right? In particular, a lot of guys on their process uh, to become coders, right? And the reason why this is, is because of its tendency to distract individuals, right? It's tendency to take your attention away from what is in front of you. And the only way that you can advance in code, the only way that you can advance to become a professional developer is by being able to focus on what is in front of you for an extended period of time. And when you're able to do that, that just opens up the opportunity for you to be able to solve something that is essentially highly complex, right? It doesn't always guarantee that you're going to solve it within the time that you, within the focused time that you give that particular problem, say it's a, co a, a code problem, right? But you 
effectively and I would say objectively have to procure a high degree of focus just to give yourself the chance of actually being able to solve that problem. And if you don't have that degree of focus, you're at best going to struggle extremely hard to this. You're going to struggle an extreme amount toward the point that you make solving that problem harder than it needs to be. And it's already inherently a hard problem to solve, right? If you play at a two x speed, I'm gonna tell you right now. I hate you. I I, I hate you with a. I, I hate you with a mental bomb. <laughs> but the point here, but the point here is that when you don't give your your 100 attention to the code, you're not going to advance in it. You're not going to advance in the problem that you're dealing with, right? So the most important thing is to not have that phone around you right? To not have that phone around you when you're coding. And this was like, this was something that I talked about in a few live streams back as a segment of a bigger, uh, of a bigger topic. But I realized the more I thought of it with how you be, with how ubiquitous phones are, that this is actually a live stream in and of itself. And that's why we're here, right? That's where we're here today, right? And it, everyone has one, right? ubiquity like every everyone has one it's 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 so common it's so embedded in the culture it's grabbing so much of our attention that we even forget that it's it's doing that right um like i said it is more of an extension of us at this point than it is a object like a you know like a cup or you know or a mug you know it's it, it we don't really look at it necessarily like an object we, we we look at it as an extension of ourselves right and because of that it's very easy to forget just how much attention it's taking away from a lot of other things that we could be doing in life that could be productive and conducive to stuff like getting more money right and in this case if we want to make that more tangible for you guys is in learning a skill like code that will get you more money, right? And that's why I said your, your phone is sabotaging your success and you're not, you don't even know it. Cause if, if you're starting, I don't actually even, have, I, I, I stopped putting my phone in my room and it's made a huge difference, right? But let's say I did have my phone in my room, right? Um, what I used to do when I would go study and I, and I made this error and I still became a coder even with phone in hand. I should say it's very important to know that I, though I will say now that I'm at on this side of things, I noticed how much harder that made my process. Right. Um, so typically when I would start learning to code, I would, um, have my phone around and I remember like in just full sincerity, I would do like 15 minutes of code, 20 minutes of code. And then I would like have to take a break to like get on my phone and like, scroll on ig or swipe on a dating app you name it like i would just go on i would have to drag my attention away to my phone eventually and sometimes when it was really bad I, what i would do is while i was studying not even on my break time while i was studying i would have to uh go and and i say i have to because it kind of felt like it at the time I, I, I would have to pull my phone out look at telegram look at, a, at some sort of messenger ig whatever you name the application I, I had to look at it just for the anxiety of not having looked at it in the past like three minutes so and, and and then put it back and then start try to get back only to get distracted and want to like check it again and then pull the phone back out and then just by the time i would get back to the code i would just my brain would just be so unfocused and so frazzled that I honestly would barely make any progress, but I would do that enough times where I would make some progress. Right. Um, and it was just to, to have your attention just jump in and out like that is, I, I it seems kind of foolish now when I'm looking at it. Right. But it's so common that you don't really think about it, right? And 
I would also see this in university too, uh, when like students would go to study. Now I would do this too. It's like you go to study and you're sometimes like in group studies, like you, in the libraries, like students would gather around tables to like to, to, to study. And, you know, you, you'd have the situation where like the student would have the, the book open or whatever material they were digesting open and they couldn't, and, and, and they couldn't just focus on the book in silence. Like they would, they would, they would have the book and then they would like pull out their phone on occasion, put it back, pull out their phone on occasion, pull it back, try to read a little bit, pull out the phone on occasion, read it back, maybe have some music going on at the same time. And it was just, it's just like it's just too much it's just like too much for your attention to be like to, to, to be doing that right and we're very we're very um we're very one track focused in terms of our ability to execute on things we we, we act like we're not but we, but we are uh from 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 um how should i say this uh I, I, this is anecdotal i'm gonna say i'm gonna i, I get the i get the sense however that based off of the information that I've been able to gather across the internet, that the reason why we're so uh, one track focused is because of our, um, and I think I, I, I think this is a good reference for stuff like mastery. It's because we had to dial in on a prey, you know, across the savanna or whatever environment you'd be in. It, is it, you have to dial in on a single prey in order for you to actually be able to hunt it, right? And it's because of that ability that we're it's, it's because of that that we're only really actually able to focus on one particular task at a time now and we're gonna do a whole show on that uh here coming up um and i think it's i think it's this week we're gonna do a whole show on that uh but the point is is that your attention is not really meant to be split into a thousand different places right um and we're doing that. Like we're, we're, we're all doing that. We're all ubiquitously. It's ubiquitous amongst humanity that we're splitting our attention into a thousand different places, you know, uh, whether, and, and it, it, your phone is, it, your phone is the, the interface for that, right? It, it, it's, it's the interface for that. But even in, in your phone in and of itself, you're not just, you're not just a lot of times you're jumping between different applications in that phone. So, your phone is so you're having different levels of distraction, right? Where you're not just getting distracted to get to look at your phone. It's not like you're. It's not like if you're typing away and you're reading on a book, right? And that's that's just that's that's at one level of distraction, right? Because you, you instead of looking at the code, you're reading a book. That's one level of distraction. But your phone, because it's so, because of uh, because of the software, it can take you to different layers. Uh, different levels of uh, of distraction, right? So you uh, it at least will take you one more layer of distraction, which is whatever application is on that uh, is on that phone, right? And if that application has uh, the ability for you to uh, to to scroll and like look at videos, for example, then you'll start looking at that video, and then that video below it will have um, will have uh, comments. And if if you're reading comments, do you see what I'm saying? Like you're, you're, you're really, even if you were to take the, the, uh, how should I say this? Even if you were to take the analysis of the different levels of distraction away, what I do know for sure is that it's splitting your attention, right? And, uh, so it, and it, it's not doing that a little bit, it's doing that substantially, right? Uh, to the point where it, if you don't, know to if you don't know how to put your phone the phone in its place it's going to as i said in the title it's it's going to sabotage your success objectively objectively so because somebody who has the same code problem that you have and is able to give a hundred percent of the attention to that code problem but you're only able to give 15 or maybe even maybe 25 percent of your attention who do you think is more likely to be performant in that given task? And it doesn't just have to be code. This could be anything, right? Let's say you have to write some sales copy for a landing page or something like that. And, and you're, you know, you're jumping around on your phone, off your phone, on your phone, off your phone, you know, and it takes you maybe three hours to write the sales copy when somebody who just like zoomed in, it took them one hour to write the sales copy. And probably because they had a hundred percent of their attention 
also produce a sales copy that was of higher quality, right? So it's not just it, it, it's not that just that it allows the performance to be increased, but the quality of the output from that performance also increases when you give 100% of a, your attention uh, to one particular task, right? And in this case, this applies super heavily to coding because that is the that that is the process at which I, that that is the process by which you produce code. That is the process by which you you write code is to give 100% of your focus on the thing that is in front of you to to generate some sort of uh, productive output, right? Um, and when you're not giving yourself that um, the the space to give that amount of attention to your problem. I'm trying to think of a metaphor for you guys. It, it, it would be like, man, it, it would be like being a, a basketball player and then going and doing the timeout. It's yeah, it, it would be like that. It's like, it's like, let's say that you're about to score the ball. You're on a fast break. And instead of just running straight to the hoop to, to, to go and, 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 uh, and, and make the ball into the hoop, every step, every, every dribble that you take, you take a timeout, right? You take a timeout and then you have to essentially come back to the play. You know, when you get out of the timeout, you, you have to come back to the play, trying to essentially assuming that you're going to remember where you left off with, with everything and then start the game back up, take another step, hit timeout again, you know, go be distracted, do whatever, you know, come back, you start, start it again, hit timeout. Like, it's just insanity. It's just insanity. If, if it sounds crazy, it's because it kind of is, right? We're not really meant to be splitting our attention like that, right? But we try to, um, or we forget that that's not really the case. And we just assume that that's just like the way that things are supposed to be. But I honestly don't think we have a biological predisposition to be spending our times uh, or, 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 or to have our attention so scattered like that. Right. And right. I, I, right here, I said, um, the black screen, uh, the black screen and dopamine spike, the black screen and dopamine spiking apps have become so embedded into daily life that I can with near certainty say that it's the device that is directly working against your success of becoming a coder. Right. Uh, and for all the examples that I just mentioned before I read this point off of the show notes. And then uh, take a sip real quick. And then right here. So no, uh, not that it doesn't have real, real utility. It does. There are several examples of how the phone can be helpful. For example, like if you run a content driven business, like, like the one that I run, I have to, I have to be posting stuff on there, right? I have to be posting stuff on there. Um, it doesn't always mean I'm, uh, doesn't always mean I'm reading stuff, right? Um, I, I, I do read stuff related to the channel, um, to, to, to connect with you guys, communicate with you guys. Um, but what has really shifted my mind was actually, um, that book, uh, if you guys ever read the book traffic secrets by Russell Brunson, a shout out, um, uh, that book pretty much put it into my head that the only utility for me in terms of these platforms is to be producing content and then to communicating with uh, um, with, with my audience, with with my tribe, with my people, right? And um, that 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 started it, and then I read that work uh, that that book, Deep Work by Cal Newport, and that just I, I think that that's put like the the nail in the coffin, right? But it is that is one way that you could think of it. It's like if you're building something on the internet and you have to connect with an audience, you need to, you, you're trying to cultivate, you're trying to build culture with your audience and a connection with your audience. That's that's way to go, man. I mean, you're you know we need more content creators. We really do. Like we, we really do. We really need more people to really be uh, building. I and mean, you know, it's like if you have something valuable for you to share. I always say it's a tragedy if you don't share it because you could you could be impacting somebody positively and uh, and uh, and have missed that opportunity by you not sharing it right so I I think that 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 that, that is pr productive and it's productive from a um, from a consumer side 
if, if you're consuming the content, if you're applying the, the, the information, the positive information, right? It, it, it's, especially if the information is actionable and you're not like just, it, it's not just, and I'm not here to, I, I'm not here to put boundaries around how you should use your, like, I'm not here to put boundaries around like what's an appropriate use of this and what's not an appropriate use for this. Like, that's not that's not the point that I'm arguing because you know you could I, I'll go onto YouTube and on occasion I will have seen a Mr. Beast video. I'm gonna raise my hand, right? Like it's not it's not like I'm not I'm not saying that like it's wrong for you to be in taking entertainment. I'm saying to what I'm trying to uh, the goal of today's live stream is to get you to rethink your relationship with your phone as it relates to your. How was I gonna say? As it relates to your goal to becoming a coder, right? It's it, it, it's it's rarely that it, it's rarely that easy. It's rarely that easy to just put things in polarities like that, right? It most of these points required some degree of nuance so that you also can have a healthy relationship with the um, with like yesterday's show with you know the outcomes of your performance. Uh, a healthy relationship with, in this case, your phone too, right? Like it's, it, it's, it's trying to, um, it's trying to have these points, not just be like, how do I say this? It, it, it's trying to make it realistic to you. It's trying to make it realistic to you, right? It's because it's super easy to just be like, ah, oh, phones are evil and no phones are good. You know, like, <laughs> like that's that, that, that's an easier message to give away. But what I'm saying is like, no, it's like, let's look at, take a look at your relationship what are you trying to accomplish? Are you trying to become a coder? Okay, take a look at your relationship with your phone and ask yourself, like, how is this affecting you, right? Um, and we'll, we'll we'll double back on uh, on that point. Or how is this affecting you toward your uh, toward the goal that you want to achieve, right? Um, and then I say, uh, is all of that worth your and exactly right? So and then I write here my uh, show notes. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. So I write here. Uh, but you and I both, so not that it doesn't have real utility, it does, which is the point we just went over. There are several examples of how the phone can be helpful. But you and I both know most of our attention to our phone is relegated to phenomena like death scrolling, OCD like chat correspondences, and or content that serves as doomer validation or low hanging entertainment at best. Okay. And the reason why I say that is because at the end of the day, for all the good that the phone can do, for all the, the all the positive things that we can utilize that phone and those apps that they can produce for us, typically most of us, I'm going to say right now, are not actually using it for that reason. And you know, it, it's okay. Like I've I, I have you know partaken in the past in you know looking at content in my phone that is not productive to my advancement of my goal. Like I said, like I, I'll watch uh, YouTube videos on, uh, on like even like really hard months. Like sometimes when I want to wind down, I'll watch YouTube videos on supercars, you know, or like I'll watch a Mr. Beast video, you know, uh, stuff like that. Right. And, um, I would be, I'd be essentially lying to you if I didn't say that I've never like looked at my phone in unproductive ways or I haven't used my phone in unproductive ways because I have, you know. However, what I'm saying is that typically uh, I'm not an exception in that. Typically we all have. And it's not that that's a small part of our behavior. It's that that is the predominant use case for the phone, right? It's not that we're typically using our phone if, if, if you if, if you were to put how much you use your phone to advance your skill set versus how much you use your phone to remain in uh, the same spot, um, not not everybody's going to be like uh, how should I say it? remain in the same spot like for unproductive purposes, right? If you if you have if you were to put those two camps, where do you lie in that, right? Um, and a lot of a, a lot of people, many lie in the camp where they are typically just utilizing their phone for unproductive means, right? Um, especially if you put it in the scenario where you're trying to code at that point, if you're trying to execute something with that code, anything you do on that phone, even if it's an educational YouTube video at that point, that's not directly related to your code, right? 
if it's just like like a Tom Bill you like a uh, you know interview or something like that, that's the wrong time to be watching that video, right? Because you have a very tangible task in front of you, right? If you're like um, being distracted, even e e even if it's like if for it, that would be even equivocal to me to say that I'm, I'm working on some code, and then stopping right in the middle of my flow to of my workflow to go and post like a, a, a short or or a you know or a video onto the channel um e e even if it's good stuff that you'd be consuming when you're consuming it if it's in the middle of your process to coding it's getting in the way it's objectively getting in the way of especially of your attention right um, let, let alone, let alone that when we're, um, let alone that, that, that would be, even be the best case scenario. Most of the times it's not even on educational stuff. It's not even on positive stuff. A lot, I know a lot of guys are, are, are pretty much just consuming. I mean, just, just content that's not advancing them, uh, quite frankly. Right. But even if you are consuming content, that's advancing you, if you're consuming it at a time where you should be focusing on uh, on, on the stuff that's in front of you and it's getting in the way substantially, then that, that, that phone, I would recommend in that situation, I always say you can do whatever you want. My recommendation in that situation would be to put that phone away, like put it away. It's, it, it's getting in the way of, of your goal, you know, it, it you know, and, and take a look at yourself. Is it, you know, I'm going to say most likely, yeah, for a lot of you guys, especially especially because my own audience is, uh, you guys are, you guys are like pretty young, you know? So I'm going to guess right now that maybe you haven't really had the time to, um, or maybe nobody's really told you that, that, Hey, look, that phone that you have in front of you when you're, when you're coding, it's not a good idea. You know? Um, and it, 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 it requires a scary word that starts with the D guys. Quite a little bit of discipline <laughs> to be able to put it in another room. Ooh, I said it. <laughs> I said discipline. <laughs> okay, but then I write here. So, uh, is it all uh, okay? So, so is it all? Is, is that phone? Are those distractions? Is that worth your time and attention toward? Uh, is that uh, worth your time and attention toward coding? Right to, to toward the problem that's in front of you, right? Is, is being distracted by your phone, is it worth, you know, the, the 80K annual salary and the peace of mind that uh, you don't have to worry about rent, you know, when you get paid as a coder? Or maybe uh, even you, you could even help a loved one in need, right, with the amount of money that you're making as a coder. Like, is you being distracted um, with that phone worth the, the success and the things that come with the success, right? So you really have to you you really have to weigh what 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 is the consequence of you being distracted? What is the consequence of you taking your attention? Well, I, I say you have to, right? It's again, these are this is this is fire giving you strategy. This is fire giving you game, right? You you apply it in your life how how you want to. Um, however, what I was gonna say is that a way a strategy that you can that that can make it easier for you to apply discipline in this situation is to really weigh what what, what you're dealing with right and one way that you could look at it is that every time that you go to code you're advancing your trajectory to having a higher earning a higher earning potential if you're if you're freelancing you you're literally you know you're you're super direct in that pro like you're you're probably doing it for a client, right? So you're literally like your code is room, like, you know, you, you're getting paid for the skill, right? Um, but e even if you're a career developer, right? You're, or, or even if, you, if you're just seeking to be a career developer, um, by you putting in that work in time, that work, you'll, you'll cash in all of that accumulated work, right? You're, you're going to cash it in and then in the, in, in, uh, you're going to, you're going to come back with an annual salary of, you know, we, 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 we've referenced that on the channel of 80 K, right. And you, 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 you think to yourself, okay, well, what could I do with that 80 K? Well, maybe for the first time in my life, I can, uh, you know, for some of you guys, like maybe for the first time of my life, I can live on my own. 
maybe for the first time in my life, I can I could take a little bit of my, uh, the check that I get paid. Um, I could take some of that money and I could I, and and I can help my mom pay her rent. You know, uh, maybe for the first time in my life, I can I can invest in the asset. You know, maybe for the first time, you know, and, and all those things become a possibility when you execute on the task of coding and then extrapolate that out to stuff like applying to jobs or, uh, you know, acquiring clients, stuff like that. Right. Um, but but to make it simple, it's like that's kind of the decision that you're making when you're sitting in front of your desk. And every time you pull out your phone, to some degree, you're 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 hindering your ability to work toward that uh, that that vision of uh of the lifestyle that the adk can provide for you right um and that's just one example but i think it's i think it's a fruitful example to to really look at what um what like what was what is it actually worth to you to become a coder right and is it is it is it worth you know like and and, and i and i write here um like, is it worth like the IG girls like shaking their butts and uh you know TikTok eroding away you know your your last ounce of patience you know is it is it um is it is it worth that you know is is the the ADK being able to provide for your for your maybe your mom like pay her rent or just provide for yourself, you know, even just provide for yourself. Like, is that worth it to you? Right. Um, to be looking at your phone, being distracted by all this stuff, right? Like I, I would say no, you know, like uh, mo most things that you see on that phone are not going to give you a return on your investment, on your time, on your attention. In fact, I would say most of those things are designed, uh, to erode, um, uh, to take from you and, and, and not give anything back. Like that point that I hit there, I kind of hit it wrong. Uh, where it's, I said that the TikToks uh, eroding away your last ounce of patience. And um, this, this, this can, that might even be a whole live stream. And the reason why I wanted to mention this particular point, we're going to, um, we're going to look into this a little bit right now is because the other thing too is that what it's done what it's done aside from take away from your attention is that it's jacked up your sense of uh your expectation for results right uh everything is quick delivery everything is now everything is instantaneous on the phones you know you get the TikTok, boom you get your hit you know you watch you you, you know you watch uh it, you know you look on uh instagram check out somebody's story boom you get the hit you know and uh, scroll and scroll everything is like a scroll everything is like just designed to just feed you another piece of content another piece of content another piece of content another piece of content and the algorithms are also designed to eff effectively figure out what you like and feed you more of it you know so you're you're literally you're literally giving your attention to something that's designed to you know you know and you know, it's, that's why I say like some of those things are taking from you. Some of those things are taking from you. Now there's, there's good content out there too. Like there's content out there that is you trying to uplift you to try to give you something of value that you, that, that you can take from it, right. That you can grab something from it. Like, Hey, here's, Hey, here's this little nugget of gold. Go ahead, take it, apply it in your life. You know, like that, like that's, that's good content. And that, that's, that's, that's the kind of double, that's the other side of the coin with this, right. Is that there is actually good content out there, right. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of stuff is not designed to be doing, like to be giving you guys games, you know, a lot of stuff is just designed to keep you guys, uh, you know, like, uh, like <laughs> I don't have my phone, but you know, de that's why I call it death scrolling, right? When you, I've seen people death scroll before. I mean, pretty, it gets pretty bad, you know, when they're like, they're scrolling, 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 and then they're, you know, whatever receptors are making scrolling interesting are just way you know like those like hits of dopamine the like the, whatever whatever's going on in that brain man that is just it, it's just overworked it's like there's like they keep scrolling and it's just not even doing it for them anymore you know? <laughs> that's what i call dead scrolling uh dude and dead scrolling is for real it is for real and um it's so they so they, they they don't they don't just the phones don't only just take our attention and make it hard for us to get like work done 
but um, they're, they've also ruined our expectations and make it harder to do re like good real work, which is coding. Like, how interesting to you is going to be writing ten lines of code relative to watching your favorite content creator produce something that is interesting to you? It's it's not going to be that good, you know. It's not like code is not like you're in a Ferrari, like going 179 on the freeway in terms of intensity. In fact, it's like the exact opposite of that, right? I mean, it's, I would say even to some degree, um, it, it would be, I think it's actually more engaging than reading. I think it is actively more engaging than reading in my opinion, but it's, it is, I mean, it's not so, it doesn't fall so far from that tree. You know, it's, yeah, coding is not like, you know, it's not like I, I had a whole, it's not a, it's not fancy, but then the other part is, it's kind of boring, right? It's kind of boring. Like you typically coders who find it interesting. They, they find it engaging to wage these like logical, uh, play this game of logic to try to get things figured out in their head. And then it feels extremely, what I will say, what feels extremely satisfying is solving a complex piece of code that will get you riled up, man. That for me is like, if I was an NBA player and I like, Dunk the ball on somebody else like that's like what that feels like that, that that kind of you get that you know like damn i just saw some complex as fuck uh like that kind of feeling that feels really good right um but it's but but the process doesn't compare to the distractions that you can get on your phone right uh let alone it uh you know with with stuff like tiktok uh, essentially draining your, your, your any whatever sense increments whatever sense of patience you have you're you're, you're gonna be like what why would I be coding? Coding, it, it takes me an hour to two hours to solve something, right? Why don't I just give an instant gratification with something on TikTok? Why not? You know, it's it's right there. So most people will do that intuitively, right? So, um, okay, so we hit that point. So the dream of becoming a coder lays bare in a fiery wasteland of other dreams that could have become reality had you been able to put the phone in its place? And that's what is on the table. You know, every time that you decide to be looking at your phone instead of coding, especially when you know you should be coding, it's only putting your dream further and further away from your grasp, right? It really is. It really is. I mean, it's prolonging the duration in which you have to go through the process to become a coder. It's prolonging the, the, the amount of effort that it takes. It, it, it's just extending what you're going through, right? It, even if you persist, let alone that it's going to be a consistent, you know, detractor to you advancing at all to the point where guys will just quit, right? Not directly because of the phone, but it's the phone was pretty much an instrumental pro part in that process, right? Maybe without them even knowing, right? So... There's a cost to it. There's a cost to it for sure, 100%. I mean, even to this day, even after you get, even now that I've gotten, you know, coding success, I mean, I see it, I see a, a substantial amount of drawbacks in it. Like for doing stuff with the business, for the code that I do on a regular uh, basis, you know, for clients, um, for job opportunities, uh, it just only, I, I, I only see it like having the phone around me while I'm actually trying to execute on those things that are important to me. As, as I said, as a, de as a detractor for me to actually get to that success as a detractor for me to get to those goals. And the, the thing is, is that important stuff that it, important stuff that needs to get done. Uh, it, important. If you if you desire to make an impact in life in particular, I think it's, it, it's even more dangerous because at that point too, you're, it's preventing you from realizing your vision. It's preventing you from realizing, you know, from executing on your goals and those things to execute them. It takes a tremendous amount of work, attention, focus, all of that. And if it's split between you and your phone, you're, you're not really giving yourself the best chance possible to execute on those things. Right. And like I said, I'm not coming at this from a moral high ground. I, every, every mistake that I'm mentioning today or every kind of like crappy part about the phone I've done myself, right. I'll raise my hand on like I'm, all I'm really doing here is just bringing attention to it and having us uh, maybe rethink our relationship with that phone, right? As I told, uh, I told the girl, she was like, uh, uh, we, we were talking about this uh, and I was like, um, it really comes down to learning how to put the phone in its place, you know? Um, 
And then, and then right here, uh, kind of alluding to my last point is that, you know, I'm not advocating a complete severance from tech. I'm not, I mean, I, I, I do it for content creation all the time. I, I'd be, I don't know if we're is the word, word, but I'd definitely be wrong to, to say, Hey, look, working with technology, like a phone's dumb. It's like, n- no, like a, a phone's so dumb that like you, you should like throw it in the water, you know, like throw it in the lake, forget about it. Like tech free life, bro. Like, nah, I mean, I'm also not that guy, you know, I'm not that guy. I'm, dis- <laughs> I'm definitely not that guy. So, um, so I'm not advocating a complete severance from the tech. I know, I, I know it kind of sounds like it, like, uh, <laughs> like through the show, but, but no, I, I'm simply like here to make you wonder and ask yourself is like, do I, do, do I have control over my phone or does my phone control me? Ask yourself that and be brutally honest. Do you have control over your phone? Or does your phone have control over you? Kind of interesting to think about, right? It's a, that's a tough one, man. That is a tough one. <laughs> um, okay, so um, before we get done tonight, yo, I got some comments tonight. Yo, hey, hi, good man. Huh? You're right. I let my phone and back. Uh, I let my phone and back to work now. Good, bro. Dude, uh, good man. Uh, have, ha- happy for you. Um, I'm glad you're. Uh, I'm. I'm glad you're liking the game, bro. So really appreciate you. Thank you for showing up. Um, okay. So before we get out tonight, um, I am going to play this video that is related to uh, this particular topic. I think you guys are really gonna like it. It's a, it's a little treat for uh, my replay gang. If you guys stuck it out uh, this far along, I really appreciate you guys. Um, I'm going to play the video and then um, a sign off uh, just so that you know, but it's very important for you to watch this video because it's gonna, it's gonna drive the, the, the point home, okay? Um, now, what I was gonna say is, um, yeah, uh, before I play the video, make sure to comment on the ch- uh, comment on this video, subscribe to the channel, very important, subscribe to the channel, make sure to like the video, and yeah, just happy that you guys continue to roll along with me. If you are currently in the job search, trying to get your first job as a coder, make sure to go to getmoneycoding.com and get your free coding report. That coding report will be a asset for you to get your job. It's going to facilitate your process, help you get to your goal faster, give you an understanding of what's going on in the market and really all, and also just how much money you can be making. So again, go to getmoneycoding.com and get your free salary report. It doesn't cost you anything. All you have to do is enter your email once you're on the website, enter submit, and then you will have immediate access to download the report on the thank you page. So that is it for today, guys. I am going to play this video. Uh, by Leonardo of Biz. Uh, shout out uh, Tech Chief. He's the one who introduced this to me a while ago. Um, but I think that this video in particular really is going to hit in the point. Okay. Uh, all right. So gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna play it and then I'm gonna mute myself and then I'm gonna check to make sure that it works. Okay. So it, by the way, guys, if it, the audio doesn't work, please. Let me know in the chat, okay? If if the audio doesn't work, if you can't if you can't hear it, can you let me know in the chat? Uh, very very important. All right, so I'm gonna play. Hmm. What happened? Where the drive at? Hey, yo, man! Why are you dazed? Get down! What the hell are you doing? What happened? Tribe go cuckoo. Magic rock makes tribe shuffle. Many moons never stop. Magic rock cursed. Hey, yo, man! No mango crown! It will get in bones. Yeah, you smoke only leaf. Here, just hold. 
play along. Shuffling. is coming. 